Okay, welcome back. Today we're going to look at correlations. So this is Unit 1. It's the uh, kind of the seventh presentation on Unit 1. We've looked at the evolution, history of, of psychology in the first part of the unit. Now we've moved on to research methods, things like uh, statistics, uh, all the variables with the research uh, that you would do, and then now we're going to look at correlations. This is pretty quick actually it's one of the shorter ones so let's think about correlations and what correlations would be at the top right hand corner you've got some toast and that equals what A's on your report card does eating toast and maybe coffee it looks like they're having coffee or tea in the in the reflection does eating that breakfast or th that breakfast particularly give you the chance to get all A's you've done both but are the two variables related to the point where that we have causation? They're correlated, they're both happening, but do they cause each other to happen? Picture below that. Recent surveys show that 100% of people who drinks water dies. That's a fact. I think that's true. 100% of people who are alive have died so far of all the people who have died all of them were alive at one point so you can mess with statistics and kind of say what you want but correlation does not imply causation and that's something you may be able to use with your parents and the Wii remote remember to put that little strap on your wrist another uh, another little cartoon up here it says someday I want to get married because studies show that married people are happier it's what the woman is saying to Dilbert with the funky tie there he says a smarter interpretation is that no one wants to marry an unhappy person she says you're annoying and he says with any luck your soulmate won't be perceptive so hey understanding statistics might help you uh, in some conversations the other picture here we've got the two arrows two fingers going up because both murder rates in New York City and a mountain range look exactly the same it, it, it's not related it just happens to look like that and someone noticed uh, correlation does not mean causation so let's look okay correlational research the word relation is right there underlined right in correlation so you're showing a relationship between two variables are they both kind of increasing together does one decrease and one increases do they both decrease together that's what we're looking at here what kind of relationship do both things have and understanding that correlation does not mean causation they may not be causing each other to go up but they both are and that's the statement that you can make in research so let's look at a positive correlation positive means two variables are increasing or decreasing together so you can have two things decrease and that's a positive correlation because they're aligned so example is the number of gallons pumped is positively correlated to the amount of money spent on gas so you understand how that would be you pump gas you spend money so with your fingers you need to be doing this kind of thing thinking about the positive correlation is it positive if they're both moving in the same direction it is and so that's a positive correlation and if you drive you probably understand this one pretty well let's look at a negative correlation which means that variables move in opposite directions from each other okay so an example would be miles traveled is negatively correlated to the amount of gas left in your tank so you've traveled miles and what happens to the gas in your car goes down so basically to mirror it it'd be like this so you've got miles traveling are increasing and what happens to the gas in your tank you're nearing empty make some sense the best thing to do and that's why I put the, the fingers on there is to kind of mark that out um, it doesn't really matter which variables doing which you're going to if you're going in the same direction you are positively correlated okay if it's an opposite direction you're going to have a negative correlation positive and negative correlation so think of strong and weak correlation examples 
Write those new notes, bring them to class. We'll be working on them in class this week. Strong and weak. Let's look at scatter plots. Um, graph uh, scatter plots are graphs that are comprised of points generated by values of two variables. So these are data points. The slope of the points predicts the direction or the overall slope or the general uh, slope of it. The amount of scatter will speak to the strength of the relationship. They increase together and decrease together. Remember if they're um, going to be positive or negative. So let's look at the top uh, thing there. It says correlation, relationship between two quantities such that when one changes, the other does. So auto mileage, auto value. Auto mileage increases. What happens to auto value? Or I'll do it this way. Auto value decreases. How about auto, auto quality and auto body color? Is there a correlation? No. So the first one is a negative correlation because they're going in opposite directions. How about auto accidents and auto insurance costs? Auto accidents rise, and what happens to auto insurance costs? Also rise. Positive. The first one was negative. As mileage does what? Increases you'll have the opposite occur with auto value. It goes down okay, over time. De degree of correlation. You've got strong positive here, strong negative. It's how they're grouped. So the bottom ones, or the middle ones here, this is weak, this is negative. This is none, the yellow one. And this is kind of weak, negative. Hopefully you'll get a feel for this. We're going to do a couple more of these to understand it. The correlation coefficient is shown as R indicates the direction of relationship is the plus or the minus on the on the value and it indicates the strength of relationship by 0 to 1 0 to 1 so statistical measure that shows the degree of relationship between two variables the number will always fall between negative 1.0 and positive 1.0 if on a test it says, um, what's the strength, the statistical measure of strength between uh, a number that's plus 1.5, it's not correct. And this, it's going to be between negative 1 and positive 1. The higher the number, the stronger the relationship. So, let's look at some examples of that in a second but the closer the number is to zero the weaker the relationship Does that makes some sense the closer the number is to zero the weaker the relationship the plus and the minus are only looking at the direction of the relationship is it positive or is it negative like we we're just looking at positive and negative okay the number itself indicates the strength the plus or minus indicates the direction Let's look at some more here. This might help you if you weren't getting it on the last slide. See where it says 0.0, .0 is 0. Anything close to 0 is weak. As you get closer to 1, whether it's positive or negative, that is going to be much stronger. If you're plus, on the plus side, which would be, I guess, this side, that I'm pointing to right there, I don't know. Let's just circle it. This would be a positive correlation and this one a negative. Let's look at the bottom here. Positive correlation, negative correlation, and what? No correlation. So what's R and a no correlation? It's a zero. There is no relationship. There's no strength. In a positive correlation, it's going to be a positive 0 0.4 in that case, a negative, negative 0.4. Okay? Let's look at the next slide here. Another way of looking at this, and that's all I'm doing is giving some options to view it, is you get up to a 1, you have a perfect positive relationship between two variables. You go to a negative 1.00, you have a perfect negative relationship because it's negative. And again, perfect positive, perfect negative is going to be like a straight line. 
and then no relationship is just a bunched group that you can't get a, a fix on. Here's this all over again. Just wanted you to see that again. Let's knock it back here and see it again. R is what? It represents correlation coefficient. The plus indicates the direction of the relationship, positive or negative. If it's a plus, it's positive. If it's a negative, it's negative. And the 0.37 in this case indicates the strength of the relationship. Is 0.37 strong? It's not as strong as 1. Okay, It's not as strong as 0.5. The closer you are to 0, the weaker it is. So let's look at this one. Measured using correlation coefficient, a statistical measure to the extent to which two factors relate to one another. The hours of video games played and the grade point average at the bottom. What can you say about this? Is it positive or is it negative? Well, it's negative. And that makes some common sense, doesn't it? The more you're playing video games, I'm not sure what game these guys are all playing, but they have different things, don't they? And, or, and girls, there's a girl right there, a girl right there. So the more they're playing video games, the less time they're studying. The grade point average goes down. Sorry, guys. Here's a correlation coefficient. Is it positive or negative? Hours spent studying in a week and the grade point average. Positive or negative? What do you think that it is? It's definitely positive. And it's positive in many ways. If you're going to spend more time studying, you probably will do well grade point average wise. All right, correlational research. There is a positive correlation between ice cream and murder rates. Uh oh. What does this mean? Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for the ice cream man. Does that mean that ice cream causes murder? Dexter Morgan doesn't. Why are the, both these guys doing doing this kind of shushing you? Like, uh, don't tell anybody about my murdering. Um, yeah. What might account for the correlation here? Why would murder rates and ice cream sales be positively correlated? And they are. Any ideas? Write that down in your notes, bring that to, to class, and we'll talk about it if you're uncertain. But let's look at another example here. Maybe this will help you. Um, these are sales of ice cream by month. Interesting. What's the highest month? August. The lowest months? January and December. These are Chicago murders by month. Now, January is pretty big on that uh, scale, but how about the other months? Do the other months in blue there at the bottom kind of mirror the top one? Now, what could you also say is kind of correlated with murder rates and ice cream sales? I mean, you could pair up either one of those things with summer months. Or is it summer? Is it the fact that people are more active and maybe more angry in the heat? Unfortunately, here's another way of looking at it. These are actual people who were killed in August and then in September in Chicago. And this is a protest sign that's been put up because they've had an incredibly terrible time with murder rates in Chicago. And who has it been deadly for? Remember what we're looking at here. This is not just going off the deep end with murder and everything, but we're looking at statistics. And what can we read from statistics? And what kind of data do we get? So looking at the 2012 Chicago homicides in that graphic there at the, with the blue borders, who is it deadly for? What statement could you make based upon the statistics? I would say that a, a person aged 18 to 35 who is black or African American, who is a male, and who lives in the southern part of Chicago has a higher rate or chance of being a victim of homicide. Unfortunately, that's true. So, correlation and causation. So let's look at it. Low self-esteem could cause depression, right? Or, depression 
could cause low self-esteem. Remember correlation and causation. Just because two things are correlated does not mean that they cause each other to happen. Because look at this, distressing events or biological predisposition could cause low self-esteem and depression. You have to be very careful when looking at statistics and data and doing research that you're not making an assumption without the valuable data to back it up. All right. Now, so correlational relation detects relations between variables. It does not say one causes the other. Let's look at M. Night Shyamalan and his movie making, which seems to have been dipping in terms of uh, people who enjoy his movies. The Sixth Sense, which is a good movie for extra credit for uh, psychology, 85%. People liked it. The Last Airbender, not so good. What's, what's positively correlated with that? As his movie sales have gone down, so have newspaper rates. Very interesting. There's your look at uh, his different movies. And the critics and the audiences agreed not not going very well I kind of like the village I loved unbreakable and I did like the sixth sense um, but I know I don't even think I saw after earth I'm not into it I guess are these two things related in any way correlation does not mean causation it's just two things that are happening about the same time that's all I used to think correlation implied causation, then I took a statistics class, now I don't. Sounds like the class helped. Well, maybe. You can't say correlation uh, is causation. So here's Shaw Horn again with really good uh, description of this and another voice that might help you. I include his videos because they have helped students in the past. So this might be something that could help you. Um, that's our look at correlation today and for me this is one of the areas that's probably more straightforward and simple more simple to understand if you're still struggling with correlational research bring those questions in the class and I'll be glad to help you out till next time don't forget to be awesome